and the, the desperation experienced by a young pregnant woman with little or no support from the people in her life. She faces what must seem like impossible challenges, feeding, clothing, and caring for another human being for the next 18 years or so. Or so. Uh, it's, this is difficult enough with a steady income, but without it, life can seem very frightening. So frightening that one young woman in Texas, so frightening that for one young woman in Texas, without the means to travel to the nearest abortion clinic, to call Whole Woman's Health and ask the receptionist, what if I tell you what I have in my kitchen cabinet, and you tell me what to do? Perhaps had there been an abortion clinic closer to, the, to this woman in dire need, this call would not have been necessary. All across the country, abortion clinics are being forced to close due to unfair state-regulated trap laws, or targeted regulation of abortion providers. Today, I will explain to you how these trap laws are forcing abortion clinics to close, how this is affecting women seeking abortion, and how we, as a society, can prevent these trap laws from becoming a permanent addition to our justice system. Since 2010, approximately 250 trap laws have been passed throughout the United States, forcing the closure of around 70 abortion clinics. Most of these, there are a variety of regulations that these trap laws can impose, but the majority of them in for, require abortion clinics to undergo expensive renovations that essentially turn them into mini hospitals. These renovations uh, are often, it includes resizing uh, rooms, hallways, so that they meet a required hallway width and in, uh, adding a specific number of bathrooms. Um, so at, if, a, if an abortion clinic cannot meet the requ requirements for, for these regulations, they are forced to close. As more abortion clinics are, are forced to close, women seeking abortions may result to illegal and unsafe ways to end their unwanted pregnancies. These methods, some methods that they might use include, but are not limited to, swallowing lye, which is a cleaning solution, gunpowder, and um, as I'm sure most, if not all of you are aware of, the, the clothes hanger method. Dr. Willie Parker, an, abor an abortion doctor in Texas, describes the passing of these laws as letting politics trump medicine, which is just a, which is a short way of saying that those who pass these trap laws do not have any concern for the women that these trap laws are affecting. Now, I'm sure some of you are wondering, how can we prevent these trap laws from being passed? Being passed. Well, we can first we can keep track of these of trap laws, and one website that I found you can keep track of them is reproductiverights.org. Um, when you find these, when you find these laws, you can uh, uh, contact state senators and congressmen and get more people to con like uh, get more people to contact them, just to let them know that there is a problem that needs to be addressed. You can form protests to get more attention, and by using social media, you can get people not only from your area but people from all across the United States. Um, you can also you can also uh, help support Center of Reproductive Rights, which is like the head of stopping these trap laws from being forced. Um, this uh, what one problem recent case of trap law being repealed is in Texas was just earlier this year in Texas. A House Bill 2 law was passed in 2013, and whole, uh, an abortion clinic, uh, Whole Woman's Health, sued the state, and they didn't win at first. They had to, they had to appeal and appeal again until eventually it was taken to the Supreme Court, where it was won, where they won in a five to three vote. I hope that in this speech I have. Uh, made you aware of how unfair these restrictions are and how they place an undue burden on women. I would like to leave with the, uh, leave off with a quote 
from Amy Miller, the owner of Whole Woman's Health. She said, fundamentally, we have to challenge the mindset that allowed these laws to be passed in the first place. And I wonder how long it's going to take for people to see the outcome of our action, or more importantly, our inaction. Thank you. Do we have um, these track walls in our region? And if so, what are a few of them? Uh, yeah, we do. Indiana has a specific size requirement for rooms. I wasn't able to find out like the size they have to be. Mm -hmm. And the abortion doctor has to have admitting privileges into a hospital in at least the adjacent county. And sometimes it's hard to get. Or they can either have admitting privileges or they can have an agreement with another doctor who has admitting privileges since it's hard to get depending on the hospital's views on abortion. Yeah. Um, why, are, why does it really matter about the room size and the hallway width? Like, why are they so strict on that? Like, why does it matter? I don't know. It's just they're wanting to prevent the closed abortion clinics people when we can't get abortions. Are women able to get like abortions in an actual hospital or are they like only offered in the abortion clinics? I'm not sure. I imagine that there are some hospitals that allow abortions, but like the majority of them don't support them, so they have to go to the abortion clinics. Yeah. Can you read that quote again, if you don't mind? My last quote? Yeah. Fundamental Fundamentally, we have to challenge the mindset that allowed these laws to be passed in the first place. And I wonder how long it's going to take for people to see the outcome of our action, or more importantly, our inaction. So then I'll ask the question, why they're running away from their actions when they're getting, you know, they're, I understand rape and stuff like that, but, you know, if you have a one-night stand, you have a baby, who are you to kill the person? You're running away from your actions that you did beforehand. Why are they allowed to do that? They're killing a person, really. I don't know, sometimes you have to think about, like, preg um, pregnancy is not only physically demanding, but it's also mentally demanding. So if that person is not in a state of mind to raise a child or go through with a pregnancy, then they shouldn't, like, if it's... Should not have sex, I guess, yeah. 